Shalom, beautiful people. I have a quick word for you. The word that I have for you is that there is no restriction, no restriction. A lot of times people focus so much on what the devil is doing to them, what people can do, do to them, what the circumstance around them is happening. But whenever you know that you are a child of the Most High God, you don't have to focus on the negativity. You don't have to focus on your disappointment. You don't have to focus. You don't have to focus on frustration because whenever you're dealing with disappointment and frustration, it's almost like your faith is being tested. So surrender all your disappointment, surrender all your frustration. And one thing that I'm going to tell you is that even as the Holy Spirit was dealing with me, he said, there's no restriction. Yes, we know that we are child of the most high God and we have to put on our armor every single day because it says in the scripture that in Ephesians 6, that there is that put on your whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand against the wiles of the devil, but we rest not against flesh and blood. So every time when I'm praying, I don't think about people. I think about the spiritual, the spirits that are being used, the spirits that are behind these the, these people because just like how when god needs a vessel the devil needs a vessel as well are you going to be used for god's glory are you going to be a vessel of honor because when you're a vessel of honor there's no restriction upon your life your past is not a, no longer a restriction your your testimony is no longer a restriction your past is no longer a restriction because you understand that you are a new creation through christ jesus so even if you share your past with someone else it's, it's used as a testimony it's not used to to destroy you because it's just like the it's just like a a, a miss a phrase that is used your testimony it was a test that you had to pass so there are some tests that you have to you have to pass because it's going to be a testimony to empower someone else. When people hear what I have been through in my life, they they understand that that those were tests, those were obstacles that God gave me the strength to overcome. It, it doesn't signify, it doesn't define me, it doesn't define you. Your past does not define you. Your present doesn't even define you because your past and your presence is only propelling you to the next place that God has for you. So I challenge you to not allow anyone to make you feel restricted. Do not allow your mind to restrict you because sometimes it's not spirits. It's not spiritual things that are happening. Sometimes it's your mind because the devil will use your mind against you if you allow him to. So I challenge you to listen to prophetic instruction and begin to declare and decree over yourself and begin to know that God is the one that is empowering you. He's the one that is going to empower you to do great and mighty things. Don't allow your mind to restrict you. Don't allow your family to restrict you. Don't allow the people around you that thought they knew you or knew you about your past. Don't allow anyone to restrict you. Don't allow your children to restrict you. Don't allow anyone that is in your life to restrict you because guess what if they can't believe in the vision that God has for your life if they can't support the vision that God has for your life then maybe you have to evaluate your inner circle a lot of people they don't want to hear about those type of things your changes that you have to make someone can give you prophetic instruction someone can even give you um, a prophetic word someone can even pray for you but guess what whenever that person is speaking to you you have to be sensitive what is it that God needs you to let go of? what is it that God needs you to change in your life because even though that person can be speaking from the spirit of the Lord, if you are not willing to change, if you are not willing to let go of your past, there were certain things that I had to let go. Of. There were certain people that I had to stop hanging around with. There were certain places that I wasn't allowed to go anymore because I understood that the moment that God received me, the moment that God place his hands upon my life that I could no longer go to those places anymore. I could no longer hang with those people anymore because they didn't understand the assignment. They didn't understand that I was a new creation because they themselves didn't receive that for themselves. So I am telling you that there is some things that you have to let go of. There's some people that you have to let go of in order for you to be renewed within your mind that you will no longer be restricted. You will no longer be a, allow your emotions and some Sometimes, hallelujah, Jesus, sometimes it's not even your mind. Sometimes it's some of you that's dealing with mind attacks, but there are some of you that it's your heart. What is your heart posture? Because when God has called you, he calls us to love. Yes, we're called to fight principalities, fight spiritual things. Some of us are called into those realms because we're all called to pray. 
You can't say you're a man or woman of God and you don't want to pray. You don't want to read your word because the Bible is itself is a sword because that's why it tells you to put on your whole armor. Because when you put on your whole armor, you know that you are protected. Your heart is protected. One of your, one of your, um, your protection pieces is your breastplate and your breastplate covers your heart. So God wants you to guard your heart and he wants you to love people because we're all called to love. I'm called to love people. And that's the reason why I pray for other people. That's the reason why I fast for other people. That's the reason why I speak into other people's life. It's not because it's easy. It is because it's the burden that God has given me. And it's some of you that God has given a burden to do something for his kingdom. But some of you, you feel that, oh, I am restricted by my past. I'm restricted by my circumstances. And God wants you to have the best. He wants you to be able to pour into other people's life. He wants you to know that you are a child of the most high God. Don't worry about the mockers don't worry about the naysayers worry about focus on what god has called you to do because when you focus on god's assignment he shall make a way way before you he shall prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies you no longer have to worry about what people are doing you can pray against you could pray against those things as the spirit leads you because it one thing that i do when i'm praying the holy spirit leads me as i'm praying i don't pray on my own strength i don't pray because oh this is something Something that I just need to do because the Bible tells us that we shouldn't be just praying without no it's like you're just praying with all these different feelings and utterances and it's not the spirit of the Lord that's leaving you so I don't believe in confusion when you're praying you have to make sure the spirit is leading you so even as the spirit is leading you he will protect you because there there will be things hallelujah that God will lead you the Holy Spirit will lead you to say to pray about to fast about because the spirit of the Lord always protects his children. Hallelujah, Jesus. And I just declare and decree that anyone that will try to hurt you or harm you or, or frustrate your spirit, that the Lord God will be the one that will give you justice. Because I serve a God of justice. I serve a God that he is the judge of all creation. He is the one that we will all stand before on the last day. So if you're someone that even needs to surrender your life to God, you need to surrender your heart to God. You need to surrender your mind to God so he can transform your spirit, so he can renew you. There are some generational curses that only you can break because you're the one that's going to break some barriers in your family. Some of them, they think that, oh, I can only make money a certain way. But God is saying that you won't make money that way. You won't do things that way because you won't have to do what they had to do. God is going to make you do something different for for his kingdom because a lot of times people don't know that there is consequences for their actions but i hear the lord saying that you are gonna break generational curses you are someone that's gonna transform nations you are someone that is called to prophesy you are someone that is called to be a steward for god's kingdom and when you're a steward that means you prosper emotionally mentally spiritually financially physically god does not limit what he has for you god does not limit what he has placed within you man can try to restrict you man can try to limit you but god will never limit what he has for his children because he only wants the best for you he doesn't want you to suffer nobody can tell me that god wants his children to suffer yes there is season that we will go through certain situations i'm not telling you that i have never been through certain situations certain trials because it builds character it builds stamina but guess what there is a season that god is calling you into for you to prosper for you to be promoted for you to excel in the name of jesus christ and i prophesy that you shall excel in 2023 and whatever has come up against you it shall flee seven ways right now by the blood of jesus christ hallelujah jesus we give you all the honor and all the glory. We praise your holy and righteous name, Lord God, because we know, Father God, that it is you that is protecting us. It is you that is protecting our families. It is you that is keeping us. It is you that have made every crooked path straight, oh Lord God. So we praise you, Lord, and we honor your holy and righteous name because every gift comes from God. 
You may be an entrepreneur. You may be a you may be a doctor. You may be a lawyer. You may be a um a teacher. You may even be a pastor. You may be an evangelist. You don't only have to be the people that's within the church that is on the pulpit. God has called all of us. There is somebody that needs a word from you in the hospital. There is somebody that needs you or needs a word from you when in that nursing home. There is somebody that needs you, even if you're a security guard. You're someone that God needs to use. There's some there's something that is special. There is something unique. There, even if you're a hairstylist, God has called you because you have a unique gift. We serve a creative God. He designed us in his image and his likeness. So we serve a righteous God. We serve an amazing God. If he is so creative to create us in his image, why do you think that if you're a, you're a designer or you're, or you're a hairstylist or a makeup artist, these are all God's gifts. These are all God's creation. Because one thing that I say is if somebody's going to touch my face and, and, and put makeup on my face, I want your hands to be anointed. If you're going to touch my hair, I want you to be anointed. Everything that you're doing for your God's kingdom, if you're someone that creates clothes, you have to be creative. You have to be anointed. You are called by God for such a time as this. Because I don't want any anybody wearing clothes. Even when I'm looking at clothes, I look at the designs. I look at the texture. I look at the symbols on the clothes. If it's certain clothes that I will not wear, I don't care what brand it is. If it's something that I, my spirit is not telling me that I'm allowed to wear, I'm not wearing it. So it's not only about, it's even within fashion, we have to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, Jesus. And any man or woman of God knows that. Any prophet knows that. Anyone that has the eyes to see knows that. That not everything that I wear, not everybody I give things to, not especially my personal things, because there is people that you can give them your things, and God is telling you that this, the Holy Spirit is telling you, this is not what I asked you to do. There's people that you God wants us to sow seeds into, but that not everyone you can sow a seed into, because some people, when you sow a seed into their ministry, or you sow a seed into what they're doing, God doesn't bless it. Why? Because God did not instruct you to do it. So I pray even now for the spirit of discernment, hallelujah, Jesus, to fall afresh upon each and every single one of us, Lord God, to have the ears to hear and the eyes to see. Discern where God is taking you in this season. Discern where you need to travel. Discern when God is telling you to sit down. A lot of people, they do things and it's just an image. It's just a, it's an image. It's, it's just a front. It's not, it's not original. It's not pure. It's not righteous. It's, it's just an image. I'm not moved by people's money. I'm not moved by what people have. Because one thing that I could tell you, my mother made sure when I was growing up that I had more than enough. So I'm not moved by people. I'm not moved by circumstances. There is people that I, it's situations that I have been in where I know how it is to be lifted. And I know how it is when God humbles you and take away everything. But I have been through those seasons and I know how it is to go back up. And I declare and decree that wherever you have been humbled that you shall be lifted and you shall be honored in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Don't let anyone take away your dignity. Don't let anyone take away your righteousness. Don't let people make you feel small because God didn't call you to be a small girl. He didn't call you to be a small boy. He called you to sit high. He called you to be excel. He, he called you to be righteous and he called you to be pure. He called you to be have more than enough. God didn't call you you to suffer hallelujah jesus god doesn't god didn't call you to to make you feel that you're you're nothing that's not what god has called you to do hallelujah jesus so i pray for wisdom for more wisdom to fall afresh upon your people lord god fall afresh more wisdom even with with investing more wisdom in buying a house more wisdom in buying and buying vehicles more wisdom Hallelujah, Jesus. More wisdom in, in being able to purchase land. More wisdom. Hallelujah, Jesus. Don't worry about anybody. Don't worry about what people are saying and what they're thinking because they have no right. They have no authority over you. One thing with ministry, you, you, whenever your eyes become, become open, you can see so many things of what people try to do, but they can't win. 
because God has the final word over my life. God has the final word over your life. They can't win. They can't stop you. Because where God tell you to go, you shall go and you shall prosper in the name of Jesus Christ. I feel the Lord, I feel the spirit of the Lord is changing somebody's story. He's turning things around for you, for his glory. Because it's not about you. It was never about you. But it is about the glory of God. And because you are the child of God, you shall receive all benefit. All that God has for you. God made a, a promise to Abraham. God made a promise to Joseph. God made a promise to so many people. Joseph had a vision. He had a dream. And people mocked him. They didn't understand the vision. They didn't. They, they thought that he, his brothers them couldn't stand him because of the vision that God placed inside of him. He, he, they mocked him. They criticized size him they even wanted to kill him but because the hands of God was upon his life God protected Joseph God took him all the way to the palace where he was able to govern the land that they rejected him I prophesy over your life that where they have rejected you God is gonna allow you to prosper in the name of Jesus Christ and I speak against anyone that is speaking against someone's marriage I see that there is attack on someone's marriage and I declare and decree that anyone that would try to touch your marriage they shall touch the hand of God and you know if you touch God's hand you cannot live so I'm giving prophetic warning now I gave prophetic instruction earlier now I'm giving prophetic warning do not touch what does not belong to you do not try to to to, to touch what does not belong to you because you have no authority and you have no power so I lay every adversary against your marriage, your children before the hand of God. And I declare and decree that those that need to repent, may you repent right now by the blood of Jesus Christ. Because we God gives mercy. He God doesn't God God gives mercy and he gives warning. But he also casts his judgment. So I pray that whoever needed to hear that word, may you receive that word. Humble yourself. Don't wish other people evil. I don't I don't wish evil on people. If you look on my profile, it says armor of God prophetess. That means I understand that my battle is not against flesh and blood. It is against principalities. When God called me, he said armor of God. That's who you are. That means I fight spiritual wickedness by the authority of Jesus Christ, by the Holy Spirit. I don't deal with flesh. I don't deal with people's mouth. That's why when someone is someone that's always criticizing or talking about people, I cannot deal with you. I can't be around you all the time. Yes, God has called me to love, but God also has also called me to guard my heart. I don't deal with negativity because I don't like when people try to undermine or try to make other people feel small. I don't believe in that. I wasn't raised like that. I don't think that I'm better than anyone. So I, I can't deal with people that think they're better than other people. And I pray that if you are like that, you have a judgmental and critical spirit, that God will just begin to work on your heart. I pray for your salvation. I pray for your heart. If you have been hurt and that's the reason why you are like that with other people, I pray that God will heal your heart. He will heal your spirit. He will heal your soul. He will heal your mind. And he will resurrect everything that is inside of you that is broken in the name of Jesus Christ. And I just pray, Lord God, that you will just touch every person, Lord God, that just needs some barriers to be removed, Lord. I pray, Father God, that you will break every barrier that was has risen up against them, Lord God. I pray, oh Lord God, that you remove every stronghold and every strong man father god that you will destroy every principality and every leviathan and marine spirit right now by the blood of jesus christ i pray oh lord god that you will transform lord god and renew each and every single one of our minds oh lord god i pray oh lord god that we will always put you to be the center of our attention lord god the center of our circumstance lord god i pray oh lord god that no weapon formed against us and our family shall prosper in the name of of Jesus Christ. I pray, Lord God, that you will cover us, Lord God, and cover all that we love with the blood of Jesus Christ. We thank you, O Lord God, and we give you all the honor and all the glory, O Lord God. We praise you, O Lord Jesus, for you are worthy, O Lord God, and there is none like you, O King of Kings. There is none like you, O Lord Jesus. There is none like you, O Lord. There is none like you, 
For you are great. You do miracles every day. Lord, we praise you. Praise you. Praise you. There is a new sound that is coming out of your belly in the name of Jesus Christ. A new sound to sing. A new sound to prophesy. A new sound to preach. A new sound for healing. A new sound for deliverance. Right now, by the blood of Jesus Christ, there is a new sound. There is a trumpet that has been blown in your honor. And you shall see greatness. You shall see the promises and the glory of God manifest itself in your life in Jesus' name. Jesus love you and I love you. God bless you. And I pray that this word has truly blessed you and strengthened you and encouraged you. But most of all, have allowed you to see that Jesus love you. And that's the reason why I'm doing this video. It is because Jesus loves you and he wants you to be delivered he wants you to be saved he wants your soul to be saved not only you but he wants your family to be saved he wants your loved ones to be safe and close to him so i pray that the lord will continue to bless you and keep you and shine his face upon you in jesus name i love you so much god bless you